Good evening, everyone. Yesterday we left off at verse 16, but I just want to step back a little bit and uh, to highlight uh, a theme that we see from verse 11. Now, as we know that uh, by the time we got to verse 11, um, David had already taken the Jebusite stronghold, uh, Yerushalayim or Jerusalem. Uh, and we read in 1 Chronicles 11, it was Yoav who helped him do that. And Yoav became a general of the army. Now from verse 11, when we talk about Hiram, king of Tyre, uh, gave him uh, gifts of cedar trees and all these so that they can build a house for David. Remember this, by the time we get to chapter 7, this is important for us to remember. So I just want to highlight to you that this is about building a house for David, right? A house for David. Uh, and in chapter 7, we will continue this theme. So I'll just put a marker here that you can recall. And when you talk about people like the king of Tyre, who is a king up north, right, at a coastal uh, place uh, just next to Lebanon or Lebanon, uh, verse 12 tells us that David realized that God had established him as king over Israel. Because of all the incidents, he sees this, right, uh, that God has exalted his kingdom because of the people Israel. What this means is David it begins to know. He can see, he can tell, he can understand all the things that is happening. And he is very happy because the people around him is supporting his uh, kingship. Now, when we get to verse 13, 14, 15, 16. Now, we may wonder why did the, the scripture talk about David having more concubines, more wives, and we speak of Jerusalem because back in chapter 3, we were talking about David having children in Hebron. And so, in his two episodes, uh, is his reign in first in Hebron and then in Jerusalem, uh, there are more children and more wives at, uh, in, in this case. So after he came from Hebron, more sons, more daughters were born to David. And we've got a list of, of some of them, a highlight of them. I, I'm, I'm sure there are more, but these are some of those names. All right. Now, I just want to point out to you that from verse 11 onwards, it is about David seeing that things are really working out for him. Things are good. Uh, other kings are congratulating him. The people are supporting him that you are my bone and you are my flesh. And then he's got more wives and more concubines. And the whole purpose is that there are more sons and daughters born to David. Now, in the ancient times, um, the concept of prosperity, right? the concept of prosperity, concept where one is successful, is not about the number of wives. Uh, it is about the number of children of sons and daughters, and his own, not adopted. And so what is important is that this is another piece of information that you should put at the back of your mind, that David is seeing himself being very fruitful and thereby sees it as a blessing of God. So the king of Tyre, uh, all the tribes of all Israel, the elders, uh, more sons and daughters. And so by the end of verse 16, where we ended yesterday, all this is good. All this is a, a idea of prosperity. 
Now understand the Hebrew concept of prosperity is not about money, but it's about progress. That there are more children to David, that's progress. Where people are good to him, that's progress. When kings of other places comes and, and pays him homage, that's progress. That's prosperity in the Hebrew terms. Now we continue and we connect the, the, the narrative in verse 17. It says, now, now 17 is right after a, a, a commentary of the children. This is a time where everybody is celebrating David. And the Philistines, the Philistines were the ones who killed Saul. And now the Philistines know, hey, David is anointed king over Israel, and we should note this as over all Israel. And then all the Philistines went up to seek out David. And when David heard about it, he went down to the stronghold. This would be Jerusalem. Went down to the stronghold means at the Temple Mount, you can find that there is a old wall, right? You have a wall. And then there's the city of David. This is the city of David. And then went down the stronghold would mean going down the hill, right? That's what it means, down to the stronghold and the lower part of the city of David. Now, what is happening is that he would be having his meeting with his generals, trying to figure out what to do. And so in verse 18, this is the Philistines coming and it says overran. Now, this, how should we say? Uh, well, we can say overran. Uh, it would be um, spread it out. Okay, the, the word here is spread out. And so there were many of them. And so when you see them from afar, it, it looks like a very intimidating sight. We, we learn from verses 10 to 16 that David was very prosperous. People were supporting him. And the Philistines would have heard of it by now. And so verse 17 says the Philistines heard and they weren't happy because they thought that after Saul had died and that would make Israel an easy target for the Philistines. And now that David has come on board, so the Philistines came and says, well, let's, let's do this. The Philistines want to conquer what David has. Verse 19. So David inquired of the Lord. Now, every time you say about David inquired of the Lord or ask about God, Typically, we will understand this to be the, uh, the, the, the use of the Urim and Tumim. The oracle stones. Uh, to seek God's divine uh, answer to whether, and the question is, shall I go up against the Philistines? A yes-no answer, because they are talking about stones, right? A yes-no answer. And then, will you hand them to me? Another yes, no answer. Because this is about drawing lots. So you don't get subjective uh, expressions. And so when it says that the Lord said to David, go up for I will certainly hand the Philistines to you, would, would communicate to David in some way that both of these would be a yes answer. Yes, you go up to the Philistines and yes, the, the question is, yes, God will hand them to you. And so I guess the interpretation of verse 19 would be how the lots of the umim and tumim would have played out to give answers to the two questions. Those are the questions are simple questions. And the indication from the two oracle stones will tell David what to do. And so now, yes, the Philistines came, but if God is with them, David is not afraid. 
each time he went up against the Philistines, for example, when he was much younger, he went against uh, Goliath. He says, this is God's battle and God will win the battle and God will enable him to win the battle for the Lord. And so David has that kind of a mentality, seek the Lord. And in this case, yes, there are some divine lots that was cast and he gets this answer. In verse 20, I think verse 20 is something that we have to pay attention to. Uh, it says that David came to a place called uh, uh, Baal Paratzim, right? Baal Paratzim. And then he struck them there. You need to understand this word is struck. And this idea of struck uh, is to, to give a picture, right? That, that David came, he could be ravaging them, right? That would be a, a way of looking at it, uh, conquering them. Uh, he could have struck them and, and, and send judgment. As you can see, this word has a broad set of meanings. And so the idea of defeated them is not wrong. And it was at Baal Paratzim when David and his men came and took over this bunch of Philistines. And the acknowledgement here is that the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like the breakthrough of waters. So understand that Paratzim is a burst forth. Right? Burst forth. Baal would be the Lord, right? The master. So it is a, a, a view that God had broken through them. So Baal Paratzim is like Breaking through the enemies like breaking through waters. And so, therefore, he named that place Baal Paratzim. Now, when you read something like this, you need to understand that the first instance of Baal Paratzim is with the understanding that the name of the town is already there. Now, when the text is written, the text is writing at a time when Baal Paratzim is already named. It's just re, re, reminding us from, from backwards, right? Before the time. So the reference to Baal Parazim before this instance has no name. After this instance, uh, David gave the name. And when it was written, the name had already stuck. So then David came to Baal Parazim is the fact that it has already happened and you're just talking backwards. Verse 21, and the Philistines abandoned their idols there. Now, the whole idea of abandon is adzaf, right? Uh, and uh, this is adzaf. This comes from the phrase, like in, in, um, in the uh, Hebrew phrase, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Uh, and that is the same word, Adzaf Tani, right? It's Eli, Eli, Lama, Adzaf Tani. And, and it's, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Uh, forsaken me. That's uh, Psalm 22. Uh, left me. That's the picture. So, neglect me neglected. And so what did the Philistines do? The Philistines just dropped all their idols. Now the word idols here uh, means images, right? Images. These images is adzav. Um, and so it is interesting for us to see that um, 
when David came about and God gave the Philistines into the hand of David, these Philistines, we could say, ran away faster than they thought they would. And they dropped everything. And thereby, we could see that this is similar to an event in Egypt where God defeated the idols. Like this is a symbol of God defeating the idols. In Egypt, God defeated the gods of, Israel, uh, of Egypt. And here God defeated the idols of the Philistines. And then he says, so David and his men carried them away. Now the purpose of carrying them away was to take it, them away to destroy them and not leave it for the Israelites to find them out. And that's important because in the eyes of, the, of David and the people, the Torah it says very specifically, you shall have no other gods before me. And so the discarding of the idols were done in a complete fashion that they could not be used again. So the idea of carrying them away, and this one would be the idea of carry is to lift up. Right? Lift up. Pick them all up and carry them away. Right? This is a good word to use. So that they will not be able to have another one of them. Now we look at verse 22. Verse 22 is the second time. The second time the Philistines came up once again and and spread over the valley of Rephaim. This is spread it over. Very intimidating sight, once again. And we're told, so David asked of the Lord. Again, this would be Umim and Tumim. So it says, you shall not go directly up circle around behind them and come in front of the Baka shrub. Now this whole idea of a Baka shrub, these are, let's do this first, Baka shrubs is mulberry. Mulberry. Uh, the mulberry bushes, right? And so the mulberry bushes might be in front of them or, or behind them and they would come and surprise them. So it is at the back and so you find that all these are the Philistines. And behind them would be all the shrubs. Right? The shrubs. And the, the army of David is supposed to come from the back to give them a surprise. That's, that's the instruction. That, so God says, you shall not go out directly. right? Uh, and verse 23, uh, it merely says you shall not go up. The word directly doesn't appear in the Hebrew. It says that do not ascend. Do not climb up. Do not climb up. Do not ascend. So that's uh, probably the way to read this. And then it says, circle behind. The idea of circle behind is to uh, turn towards. Right? Turn, turn around towards. And so they are supposed to surprise the enemy in this case, right? And verse 24, it says, And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry bushes, then you shall act promptly, for then the Lord will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. When God 
tells them what to do and what to expect, especially from the umim and tumim, you find that here in verse 24, that it is God who went before them to, to prepare the people uh, to lose to David. And so it, it appears to David now that the Lord have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. The idea being is that they, they should not be worried about uh, the Philistines because God himself is going to fight the war for them. Our last verse for chapter uh, 5 would be this. As God has said, then David did just so. So notice, a man... A man after God's heart. Really tells us that David is the kind of a person that will listen to God. And if God says so, he won't challenge it. He will say, let's do it. And, and that's exactly what he did. He went to do it. So just as the Lord commanded him. Now, if you understand this whole chapter or this part of it from verse 18 onwards David has always been obedient just as the Lord commanded him and it is important because David understands what is humility that God will be our judge and David will be a subject of God and so when it came to the uh, the 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 war itself. So God struck, right? Uh, David actually struck them and killed the Philistines from Gevar as far as Gezer. What is interesting is the, 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 the fight between uh, David and the Philistines really wasn't much of a fight. Uh, it really tells us that God is faithful to his people, and through David being a loyal king. Uh, God smiled, uh, you don't call it a way, or oh, God blessed Israel and allowed David to be a hero of the nation, and he did turn things around. And so when David, a man after God's heart, went to do exactly what God has wanted, then that would be good. That would be told. And what he did was he struck and killed the Philistines from uh, Geva as far as Gezer. Now this whole chapter now wraps up in chapter 5, talks to us about uh, the, the significance of ruling in Hebron, uh, how they managed to make a transition to Jerusalem or Jerusalem, how to show that David was progressing or prosperous with other kings, with the people, and with his family, lots of sons and daughters. And now in chapter 22, uh, uh, sorry, verse, chapter 5, verse 22 onwards, you find that the local uh, the, the local people are not worried about the Philistines because David is not worried about the Philistines. The text tells us that David never once uh, doubted God. The text showed us that, uh, that, that David uh, was bold because of the engagement uh, with the Umim and Tumim, and he went forward purely as a sign of obedience. Now we've come to the end of chapter 5 and uh, this would be a very positive note uh, that uh, it ends with a second defeat of the Philistines. Now one of the things you find is that in the book of 2 Samuel there will be more discussions on the Philistines. And so we will end here today